I've designed a new movable chicken coop, one that I hope will meet our needs here in the Missouri Ozarks. If you've been following our channel for a while, you might remember the Mini Cooper Justin Rhodes style chick shaw that I had built back in Oregon. That was too big for us to ship or haul out here with us. I actually like the Justin Rhodes design for terrain that's a little bit flatter than what we've got here. There's a lot of chicken tractor designs out there on YouTube. I've seen too many videos of those lightweight pop them up on wheels and drag them around coops that just get trashed in the wind. We haven't been here all that long, but we have been here long enough to have a healthy respect for the wind out here. This coop will be on skids, but it's going to be too heavy to be drug around. We're going to use forks on our tractor to just lift it up and move it to wherever we want our chickens to be. It's going to be a relatively small coop overall, and as we need more room for chickens, my plan is to just build a few more of these as we go along. Because our channel is Simple Moon Farm, the design for this chicken tractor has to be called the Moon Lander. Stay tuned to the end of the video. Wendy and I have been working on some creative names for the coops, so we'll reveal the, the first chicken coop's name at the end of the video. To stay out of the sun and the rain, I'm going to try and build as much of this coop here in our tractor barn as I can. Please excuse the mess and the sort of janky flat surface I've tried to make for myself to work on.
I wanted to take a moment and explain about the floor. I'm using two by fours with spaces between them. That way chicken poop can fall through or be scraped and fall through to the ground. It may seem like an unusual choice to screw them up from the bottom. It's a little more work to crawl under there and try and screw them up. But if I ever need to replace some of those boards in the future, I will be able to get under there, find those screws and undo them if they were on the top. The chicken poop would quickly cover them and it would be virtually impossible to remove them later. On these threshold ends, I had to do a little custom work on a 2x4 to work around these bolts. And I drilled a long pilot hole in four places, and then countersunk in a little bit with a bigger bit here. So my longer screws would have the maximum holding power between those boards. On the ends, I left these boards out a little bit, so when I put the siding on, it'll just rest right on there. Should be about the right thickness for the plywood itself. Today, I'm in some grubby clothes because I should be able to get to a painting stage today. I need to prime and paint the siding. And uh, the doors, I'm gonna use a marine spar varnish on both sides before I paint. Hopefully to prevent some warping, I'm using half inch plywood and warping may be an issue with the doors. I've got some more reinforcing hardware in the corners up here. I'm gonna be putting one two by six rafter offset down this way because the roofing panels don't come wide enough. I'm gonna to have to have one full panel and splice in another piece so that rafter will let me screw in on either side of the seam.
Four varnish layers have had a chance to dry, as have the prime sides of the coop. Here, I'm lightly sanding the doors so the primer will have some tooth to stick to. The front and back of the coop are ready to be painted. I wanted to point out that I got to design the coop, but Wendy got to pick the color. The very first chicken coop here at Simple Moon Farm is kind of an important chicken video for us. I'm building it for these little guys. They're about three weeks old. Because it's an important video, I wanted to mention that our channel is an affiliate with Grub Terra. They have black soldier fly larva, which is an absolutely wonderful, healthy snack for the chickens. You can get 10% off if you use our discount code Simple Moon Farm, and I'll put a link in the video description. These little chickens have never tried the black soldier fly larva before, so I don't think they'll just jump all over them, but I'll leave it in there for them to try. I'm also going to give them some chick grit. Well, they're trying some of the chick grit over there. I saw that. I made a mistake back when I was building this nest box at the very beginning of the video. I should have pre-cut this angle right on the lip of this front board to match the angle of the nest box here. But it was an easy problem to fix. Everything's just screwed together so I just took this off and ran it through the table saw and put it back on. I'm not going to put the lid on the nest box until the back wall is on. Uh, everything about this nest box was made out of scrap. Fortunately, I had a nice thick piece of plywood here, so the screws will have plenty of, plenty of wood to grab into this way. I've made this jig to fit right back here. Of course, the angles are cut again to compensate for the angle of the nest box. And it's raised up enough so when the screws go in, it's biting into plenty of wood, not just the little tippy end. The nest boxes themselves are one foot square. Because of the widths of all the plywood around it, the length of the piano hinge I wanted to have was 38 and a half inches. Good luck trying to find a 38 and a half inch piano hinge at Home Depot or Lowe's or someplace like that. There's a place online that I found with incredible selection. Uh, they're not a sponsor. They just I just wanted to give them a plug here because the, I'm so impressed with the amount of, um, well on piano hinges at least, the amount of selection that they had. It's called Boat Outfitters and yeah, they had what I needed. I didn't film putting in all of these roosts, but that was pretty easy. They're just made out of two by twos. All of the two by twos were created from two by fours cut this way. All of the trim work that I'm gonna be using will be two by fours cut this way. I wanna do a quick tractor test to make sure the tractor can pick this coop up at this point.
plenty of lifting power. Did I mention that I'm pretty new to this tractor and different implements? It'll take some getting used to, to make it nice and smooth and a little more professional looking, but it, it's a load off my mind to know that the tractor can lift this thing.
Does anybody remember those old station wagons with the wood paneling on the outside? I kind of regret my decision to paint the doors on this thing. The coupe just looks better with that retro woody look. I may be crazy enough to scrap the doors and buy all new plywood, thicker plywood, but Wendy wasn't crazy enough to let me do it. All I'm doing is flipping the doors around so the paint is on the inside. All I had to do to make that happen was file off the drip edge that spilled over onto the wood side and then touch it up with a little bit of spar varnish. Hanging big doors by yourself is tricky, but really all I have to do is position two bolts so the door is held in place where it's supposed to be, and then the rest of the bolts should be easy. I did the best I could trying to reline up those holes to hang the doors. I just couldn't do it on my own. I needed a second pair of hands. Wendy didn't feel like being on camera today, so you don't get to see that part of the process. The next time I build one of these things, I'm going to look for hinges like this, only larger. I'll still be able to drill through here and then just shove the bolt through without that second hinge part getting in my way. Turns out it was probably for the best. Wendy vetoed my Brady Bunch aesthetic, so now we're back to that fuchsia pink on the outside.
reveal the name of the new coupe and the styling of it because after Brian finished it, I had to do a whole bunch of decorative painting to make it look how I wanted it and be cute and stuff. And so uh, we wanted to have, we're going to have a few of these coupes, and so we wanted to have them have fun names and things like that when we were talking about what we could do. And we decided it would be fun to give them names that were sort of themed off of other YouTube channels that we watch and enjoy and feel like they maybe have a good message and are in particular, one of my criteria was that they be very positive and not a bunch of negative garbage thrown out there because I want to support channels that spend a little extra time thinking about things instead of just putting their verbal diarrhea out into the universe for other people to have live inside their brains. So uh, this first one is, is a channel that I, in particular, have been watching since, probably since she really started almost on YouTube because I remember watching videos of her focusing more on her goats and her chickens. And so now she is much more known for other things. I'll let you figure out what it is if you can. But we're calling the coop the Roosters and Refuge Coop. And we've got some cute little hidden messages in, in the, on the coop as well, as well as some cute little things to throw back to our former channel name and some things that show that this is the Simple Moon Farm Coop, but also just to reflect that channel that we really like so if you can figure out why we're calling this roosters and refuge coop please leave a comment down below and let us know what you think the channel is we're kind of paying homage to Richard. thanks for watching remember your dreams are closer than the moon thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us